In for the Night is a podcast that discusses movies, random topics, and gives you an excuse to just stay in for the night. Welcome. Hello. Happy October. Happy anniversary month. Ah, you thought I was going to say happy anniversary, didn't you? Yeah, I was like, uh, no, we have a few days before that. Zero trust in me. Zero. Do you remember the date of our uh, our birthday? Um, Of my birthday? Yeah, October 18th. What's our anniversary? October 17th is a day I like, before. I like how you had to think about that. No, I didn't. I was doing that to like make it seem like I didn't know. Like I'm never going to forget that. It's the most wonderful It's literally time the day before my birthday. Like of if the I forget year. that. That's I why I planned it exactly balls. like that. That's no, why I planned didn't. it. I yeah. think you did that so you can remember. No, I did it so you would remember. If it was on a random day, you would not remember. I guarantee I it. I guarantee you wouldn't remember. You, you barely would write it remember down. Me. Actually, you don't even write stuff. I'm the one who had to tell you to write your passwords down and stuff. So Passwords are one thing. Birthdays and anniversaries That's pretty are damn different. important. Passwords are pretty important, though, because you need to pay bills with your password. You need to do this. You need do you to do remember that. when our first date was? When our first date was? Like our official first date was. I can't remember the date, but it was it was Super Bowl. So it was, February 7th, 2018. I was going to say February. Suck it. Yeah, because you have it written down somewhere, no, I probably. I have it written down somewhere. You're lying. I d- I'm not. Liar. Hi, I'm Katie. I already did the most work, which was... Marry ask me? On, ask you out on a date, so... You did the most work. Oh. That was the most work. Did you ever try to talk to me? No, you didn't. I talk to you all the time. You start running what into the... T- <laughs> <laughs> Arrow is now running into the wall with his tire. <laughs> I was like, "What is going on over there?" Uh, uh what? Was, damn it! <laughs> What's your fucking, name? Uh, <laughs> he's running to the wall again. <laughs> Jesus! Y'all should take two shots now. Whenever there's puppy interaction, oh, shot there's another one. <laughs> That's three now. Damn! Y'all are gonna get drunk by the end of this episode. Give us five minutes. <laughs> y'all are gonna be hammered. Well, anywho, my name is Lur. And how do you spell that? Is L E R. If you want to get fancy, L Y R. L Y R. Lur. And you get to say it like that. Lur. You can't say it, Lur. 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 There you go. <laughs> that was spot on. That was it's perfect. Like a noise. That it's was not even perfect. A Lur. Lur. Perfect. Man, that gets my jollies off. Um,. Hi. Yeah. Hi. How's How was your, your week? week? <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a beer. I can't have one tonight. Yeah, you gotta wait. <laughs> I was like, here's. My yeah, line. sadly, I have to go to work tonight. So. So we're recording this on his work day, which is yeah. usually my work day, and he's usually off. So. And I suck can it. drink, but I can't drink tonight. So he has to get a roll. You had a Manhattan. One. Correction. I had two Manhattans. I was just saying this in case anybody at work is listening. No. <laughs> no one listens at work. Well, Ryan, my, I know he listened to, oh, well, he's, no one's going to know. Um, he heard one episode, but I don't know if he's like continuing. Continuation. So, continuation of the podcast. Bienvenue. Do you know what that means? Uh, new something. Bienvenue is French for new welcome. Day. Oh, damn it. Oh, that works. New day. Or. Great day. Bonjour. Good day. That's hello. Good day. Hello. Bonjour. Hello. Hello, puppet. Well, you didn't answer the question. How's your week? This is work. Oh, shitty. This week has been shitty. Mm, yeah. How about you get into the details, man? I'm going to get into the nitty gritty. People want to know. So, beginning of the week on Monday, I'm at the I'm at the cardio. I'm at the gym doing cardio. And I'm walking and my sister calls. And usually whenever my sister calls, it's never a good thing. Because they know, don't call, text. Text me only. Don't call me. I won't answer unless, like, I know it's an emergency. So whenever my sister calls, I know it's an emergency. My dad fell. And he didn't break his hip. He didn't do anything. He was just really weak. And so apparently he had, like, a kidney infection or something. I'm looking at you like you know. You yeah, don't know. Yeah, like, know. I'm like, whatever. 
Um, so apparently he had like a kidney infection or something and he went to the hospital and he was just like really like out of it for a while. And so I was about to go down to Mahaya where they are and didn't because they told me not to because he was feeling better. Great. But I was like, shit. So dad's already on the mend. Then on Wednesday, our fucking dogs fight again. Like. Again. I let them outside for like a minute and I was going to go get them. I just wanted to grab a plug to like plug in the scents like for Febreze. So it makes our house smell good. I was plugging it in. I was like, oh, I got to go get the dogs. I went outside and they were like attacking each other. And I was like, fuck. So I was already stressed out. Already was like on the verge of fucking panic attack breakdown. And I was like, fuck. So I get like I had to separate the dogs and bring them inside and they still were trying to attack each other. I had to wake up Ty. Ty was like, fuck. Or Lur was like, fuck. And I was like, I couldn't breathe because I was like having a breakdown, I guess. And so that was a shitty day. But then the rest of the week was okay. You I mean, said your, your company's like. Company is not doing too great. It's just really slow right now. Um, they have a they have a good projection that it's going to get improved soon. It's just everybody like they canceled the Christmas party, which everybody was really looking forward to. But it was just like a lot I, of. I don't understand why they canceled the Christmas party. If like even if they were paying for everything, like your boss or whatever, if they were, they could be like, all right, well. Due to blah, 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 let's just make it, you know, uh, everybody bring something type Christmas party. Mm-hmm. But they didn't have the fucking can. You should bring that up, like, because people want to meet each other and hang out. I mean, if everybody, like, if people wanted to show up at, like, even at the office, they could just decorate it. and Yeah, just do it at the office. Like, I understand why they had to cancel it. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, it does, but it, it doesn't. Because, uh, like, Blue Board would have covered everybody's flights as well as hotel rooms. Well, that's a good reason to cancel it. Yeah, don't fucking cover everybody's flights. Well, I mean, it's part of the blue board thing. But if people wanted to show up, they could go. And well, Anyway, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. Anyway, how was your week? It's my work week. Nothing fancy. Just uh, doing my thug thizzle. You are anything but thug thizzle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just... Doing a damn thing. I, I like how you're oh actually sitting. He's actually sitting. Usually he's in his pajama pants and shirt. He's actually work like in his American Airlines like ensemble. Yeah, because by the time we finish this, I'm going to have to like skedaddle out this joint. Skedaddle. Skedaddle. So I just like, I was like, I'm not going to change again for the third time in like two hours. So I'm just going to put on my work clothes. Well, but yeah, it's just been a, uh, just been a work week. Nothing crazy. Um, oh, oh. I guess actually, I'm not going to say any names of the people, but oh, I was informed. So there's two guys that work in American Airlines. Only two? Yeah, only two. That's it. That's that's Oh, that's why American Airlines sucks. Yeah, Got it. That's cool. it. Just two. Just kidding. I like American Airlines. Um, so two guys that work there, and apparently one of them uh, just got arrested recently, like a few weeks, a month ago, maybe. So he already had a history. So like he was known as like stealing shit. Oh, he was known as, uh, as, uh, threatening crew chiefs lives. He was known as, um, uh, what else? Why did they let he him did work? some other shit that I can't think of right now, but apparently all this stuff happens. He will put in like a medical thing saying that he has, uh, schizophrenia or something like he put if he in has something. schizophrenia. He has to be. Honest. I'm not saying it's that he put in some something medical that basically exempts him. He exempts him. So, um, so the last straw was he was at work again, and he apparently went out to his truck, fucking fell asleep in his truck, and then he wakes up, opens the door, steps out, and starts pissing in the parking lot. Is he drunk? <laughs> Fuck if I know. And he got caught, and like that was, he's been fired like four times already. How is he getting hired back on? It's the union. It's the union for you. But if it was anyone else, like say if I would have done, like, would have been caught stealing, they, they would have fired me. I would not be able to get my job back. But since he put in some medical request thing, he was able to get his job back. So then there was another guy recently, a buddy sent me a, a uh, thing on WhatsApp. And I'm uh, not going to say the, but he's a crew chief 
in Tulsa, and he uh, apparently got put in jail for like domestic violence. Bitch, what? And some other shit like assault, assault with a not deadly a deadly weapon. weapon. I don't think it says deadly weapon. Non deadly weapon. But it's assault with a weapon. I think maybe it's just weapon. I don't know. Uh, let me get to it. It's like right here. Um, let's see. Domestic assault and assault and battery with, yeah, with a de- dangerous weapon. So, yeah. Because any weapon can be deadly. Like, even if it, I, that trash can, I could kill you with it. I mean, you would have to hit me with, like, the edge of it, but I don't think you could kill me with it. I'm not just going to lay there and let you do it. I'm just saying I could. But you could if you, like, knock me out pretty well and you just kept going on yeah 100 percent. like i can even do it with the squishy stuff on our walls okay i don't know about all that shove it in your face and suffocate you okay yeah like that's i'm gonna deadly... let you let that happen i'm just saying it could anywho i don't think that's counted but a spoon a fork a knife a butter knife fucking water can even kill someone like just about yeah just about anything can so it's pretty crazy but yeah so that's like I don't know what's been going on with freaking people lately, but geez, there's people some are psychotic psychos out there. So that was some interesting stuff so I found out. Tip at for work. you. Don't be crazy. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was my um, just because you think you can get away with something doesn't mean you should do it. With all the technology they have nowadays, it's kind of hard. I mean, granted, it could probably still be done, but. You know, even back in the day, like, there was, like, a lot of, not a lot, but there was, like, a couple of serial killers who could have, like, gotten away, but they made, like, one little small mistake. Like, they would call their parents' house or something, or they would, they would, I don't know, they would do, there was, I can't remember who it was, but there was one, it's like, this guy was, like, scot-free. Like, literally, he was in the wind. And then apparently he like called his ex girlfriend or something, or oh. he did something stupid that he didn't think that was going to get him caught, and ended up getting him caught. And I was like, "Dude, I mean, I'm glad he got caught because I don't really <laughs> kill people." But it's just like it's just simple things like that you can just get fucking in trouble for and go to jail. So I mean, yes, but I mean, it's like, but it's that's what's happening nowadays. Like these, did you see the um, what was the new one? Oh. Fucking cooking chicken with NyQuil. What? Okay, I don't understand that. What is that? People are dying from doing that. Because they're overdosing on fucking exactly. NyQuil. Exactly. It's like, and, and it's like, oh, what is that? What do they call it? Challenge? Like. Tide Pod Challenge? It's, it's not Tide Pod Challenge. It's like some internet challenge or web challenge or some challenge, whatever. And it's like, oh, NyQuil and chicken. It's like. What? Why the though? Fuck? Why? Like, you know, if you cook it, it's going to absorb it. And then you eat the whole... Fu- like, maybe if you only had a couple of bites, okay. It probably so tastes bad. like shit, too. Probably. Probably. Tastes like straight ball juice. Not that I know what ball juice tastes like. I'm just saying. I mean, do you have balls? <laughs> I mean, Can you I bend? smell sometimes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're just going to dive right into our movie. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> That's gross. No, I mean, guys do it all the time. They gotta don't sure eat chicken and NyQuil, fuckers. And don't smell your balls in public, fuckers. Just in- <laughs> <laughs> fuckers. fuckers. <laughs> yeah, don't do NyQuil and chicken, people. And don't do Tide Pods. And don't, don't do, do fucking don't, aerosol. Uh, and don't, don't do, do Whippets. That's whip just it, Yeah, Whippets. That's, That's what stupid. I mean. Just just don't do that. If it's, if it's a challenge on the internet... More than likely, you can die from it. So just don't fucking do Except it. Except the ice bucket challenge. That was not. That was fine. What is fine. that? Where they pour ice water over you. Oh, that's fine. That's, that's, that's fine. just gonna make you. But cold. things that you have to ingest, maybe just but don't. But don't do it when it's like fucking negative twenty degrees outside. That probably yeah, shouldn't be the smartest. That's true. But uh, yeah, if it's you know eight degrees outside, that's fine. And then also like the the wine cooler challenge. Like basically, you gotta like. I, I've never done it, but I know my buddy of mine, J A. He oh. just text. I talked to him today, or texted him today. It's like basically you have to get on a knee and you have to chug a wine cooler. Get on a knee? Why would that? I don't. Happen? I don't know. I don't know what that does, but you have to get on it. You get on your knee and chug a wine cooler. Someone, I'm sure, a buddy of mine would probably be calling me. He's like, "It's called this," and I'm like, "I already know 
R. Oh yeah, and I got some shade R-G. because I didn't know what was skeet. Yeah, skeet. Skeet, oh, skeet. skeet, skeet. Come on, babe. You gotta know what skeet. Now means, I right? know what it is, but I'm not ghetto. Damn it, I'm white. Neither am I, and I know what it I'm means. I'm a snowflake. <laughs> I am nowhere near ghetto. Like I am like the furthest from ghetto, and I know what it meant. All right, so to the movie. movie. So our movie today is. What is it? I was gonna let you say it, but okay, red. <laughs> It was, it's red today. I'm reading the synopsis. So, uh, penis, penis. Um, it is found on HBO Max. If you have not watched it yet, definitely watch it. It's actually a very good movie. Very, and they have a red too, by the way, which we'll probably <laughs> watch that. I didn't even <laughs> didn't know. know. I've seen so. both of these movies. He's never seen any of them. I thought he really watched these. I did and not. he's never seen them. I, so did not. I found it hilarious. So, we got R.E.D. It is came out in 2010, action comedy. We uh, have 7 out of 10 on IMDb. We got 60% on Metacritic and 71% on Rotten Potatoes. Potatoes. And then we got 75 of Google users like, 75% of Google users like this movie. Didn't score that great. So, on to the synopsis. Penis, penis. After surviving an assault from a squad of hitmen, retired CIA agent Frank Moses, Bruce Willis, was... Reassembles his old team for an all out war. Frank unites with O. Joe, Morgan Freeman, Crazy Marvin, John Malkovich. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's John Malkovich. And sure. W I L Y, Willie? Willie, Willie, Wiley, uh, Victoria, or Helen Marin to uncover a massive conspiracy that threatens their lives. Only their Expert training will allow them to survive a near impossible mission, breaking into CIA headquarters. Release date was 2015. Hey, look at that. 2015 or 2015. I was like, I thought it was 2010. <laughs> Five years October later. October <laughs> 15, 2010. Oh, yay. Go. October movie, guys. Yep. The director, Robert Shinwinkle. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Box office one hundred ninety nine million. Budget was only sixty million. So oh, they made sweet. quite a wait. It says budget sixty million, and then USD, and then fifty eight million USD. I don't know what that means. Um, and it got nominated. So we got Bruce Willis, John Malkovich, Helen Marin, Morgan Freeman. We have Mary Louise Parker, my boy Carl Urban. If y'all don't know who he is, he is uh, Billy Butcher from the Boys. And then we got Brian Cox. So, yeah. 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 I, so, uh, I actually kind of missed the very beginning of it. I mean, I was watching it, but I was like also eating because I just woken up at the time when we started watching it. Okay, so I'll, I'll run down what happened in the beginning. So... Frank Moses is retired and he's sitting at home and he gets his pension check. He rips it out. Like he calls the pension office and calls Sarah, who is his pension officer. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to her and he's like, I haven't received the check. And so he has been talking to her consistently every month. And he's been ripping up these checks every month, even though they get to him. (laughs) So he he definitely has a savings account. So he used to be CIA and he did like covert shit. Anyway, so he calls her and it's really sweet because they like know each other's lives. And she's like, oh, how's your avocado? And he has like a little, little, little avocado plant. And he's like, it's alive. And he's like, well, she's like, oh, that's great. And he's like, well, it could be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's reading this book called, I think, Love Savage Island or Love Savage something where it was just like a stupid romance. And she's like, it's awful. And she explains it. And she's like, I love it so much, but it's so awful. And he's like, okay. And so the sweetest thing he goes and buys it and starts reading it mm-hmm. that is a that's like like a stand-up person if gentlemen if you are interested in a person male female in between figure out what they like and like try it because if you don't normally like reading Thai, i don't maybe just try to read something that they like maybe you could get into like have some like some passion then can talk about it that's what you do don't try to fucking drug them don't try to kidnap them no drug them kidnap them tie them up give them a roofie and then everybody will be happy yeah 
Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, That's what I did to you. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't remember. Oh, is that how we got together? That's, That's how we got great. together. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so at the on the last phone call he has to Sarah, he says he's going to be in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, oh, okay, call me when you're here. And so Oops. she's nervous and she's like, oh, she's kind of excited, but she's nervous at the same time because you don't – talking to somebody, they can have a completely different voice from what they are in real person. Oh, yeah, like, 100%. Or they can just be mass serial killers. True. True. I did see from there on, basically. It was just like the very beginning part. Like I saw him like get the check and he ripped it up and he's like, yeah, I haven't received my check. And I kind of figured it was just so he it's could talk to her. It's a little light line that's so cute, but she knew that's what he was doing. Oh, yeah. She said it. And he's like, yeah, I would rip up those checks. She's like, I know. But they it just, was so sweet. He just wanted, <laughs> they wanted to talk to each other. Obviously, if she didn't want to talk to him, she wouldn't talk to him. Because she went on a terrible date with that douche who was like, I can't even come in. She's like, and then she gets in. She's like, no, he lived with he her lived mother. With his mom. He didn't have a job. She's uh, like, you are not getting in this. <laughs> and then Frank Moses is standing there. Yeah, he's he like, that. hi. <laughs> oh, but we need to rewind and talk about his great escape from his house. Oh, yeah. So. Just a little bit. So apparently, like, CIA, CIA agents were went to his house and. I think they were FBI. Or SWAT. Something. No, SWAT. I don't know. There's something. Somebody with a lot of guns. They shoot the shit up of his house. Mm-hmm. And this dude just seriously walks around in bare feet. taking With a off. robe on and his fucking pajamas. <laughs> pajamas. <laughs> pajamas. Bananas and pajamas. And he just fucks shit up. Like, and then he takes this guy's gun. Like, uh, what is it called? The clicky thing. Clicky thing? Uh, the clip. The clip. He Mag? takes a clip and em- empties it into a pan. He puts a little oil in it and put so starts it like he just turns the heat on. And he goes and he takes a sledgehammer in his basement and breaks up his little box of treasure, which is includes guns, passports, and money. Like mm-hmm. who has the stash. time? Who has the time to hide stuff like that? him? Obviously, he lives alone. Like, what do you mean? I don't think he's probably never been married because. Uh, Later on, the the girl that shows up, she's like, I have never seen Frank like this. Blah, 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 blah. That was sweet. So, obviously, he's probably never been married before. Because I don't think he had kids. He obviously didn't have kids. Yeah. So, in the in the movie. But he has, like, a slew of kids in real life. Um, But, he, yeah. So, he escapes. Like, But the thing is, it's really interesting. Put bull- I wonder if that actually works. If you put bullets in a pan, would it really? I won't. I don't see why not. Because it's gunpowder. That's how they, they get hit in the back and it ignites it and fires it. So I'm sure if you put it in a pan with oil and it heat it up, it should fire off. Hmm. I don't want to try it. I don't want to try it either. Not here. We can go to like some like broken down place and try it. Because I definitely want to and then stand outside, obviously. Because if they do fire, then I'm not trying to get hit in the face. Because you'd have to... I, you would... Couldn't even, like, duck because if it ricocheted on anything, oh, yeah. you'd be fucked. It's going to hit you for sure. And I think that's what it, it would ricochet there. But obviously, a buddy at work, well, we'll get to it. But I'll bring it up, the rocket launcher scene. I'll, I'll bring it up. When I'll Just remind me and I'll talk about oh, it. Oh, okay. Um, um, so there was a phrase in here that they said, and I wanted to bring it up because I learned something this week. The phrase, kick the bucket. Mm-hmm. So I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about people getting hanged and they would be standing on a bucket essentially. And then when they were trying to hang them, they would just kick the fucking bucket. So that's where the phrase kick the bucket came from. Mm-hmm. Ah. Which technically shouldn't be used in any thing I that mean, we're doing nowadays unless you're hanging somebody. Hey. Take a shot, people. Who's that? Lala didn't like him licking her anymore. Come here, Lala. Fifi, stop. Fifi, stop. All right, so uh, we're gonna go on. Sorry, oh, you guys have to take like two. He's two, licking the crap out of her ear. Two shots for this. No, Lala, come here. Stay over by us. We love come you. Here. 
Um, so kick the bucket. That's very interesting. I like, I always like learning where phrases come from. And so t- kind of talking about that, um, do you know, do you remember what I said about mind your P's and Q's? Yeah. Mind your, mind your pressure points and quality. I don't know. No. Mind your pints and quarts. Seriously, that's what P's and Q's means? Because when everybody's at the bar, they're drinking pints or quarts because that's like the measurement, I guess. And so when everybody was getting into other people's business, he's like, mind your own P's and Q's. I never knew that. So mind your own beer. Like you just. I didn't know it was pints and quarts. Um, And then same as like wet your whistle. Do you remember that? Wet your whistle? Yeah. Have you heard that? Mm -mm. Oh, I need to wet my whistle. Like drink something. Wet your whistle back in the day. I think in England, um, the steins that they had had whistles at the end. So whenever they need a refill, they would blow the whistle. Really? And so that's why your whistle <laughs> happened. I'm sure bartenders will get pissed. Yeah, I know. That that's nowadays. that's gone. That's gone. Um. So after pretty much Frank Moses kidnaps Sarah. Mm-hmm. He kind of kidnapped. It's kind of sweet, and she really likes it. But she's like, "It's not my best first date, but it's, it's not, not my, my worst." worst. <laughs> and that's so sweet. She's like, "I thought and you'd she have was hair." Like smiling. <laughs> so yeah, we can't get all what we want. I thought you would have hair. <laughs> and what did she? She said something else. Not kidnap me or something. I don't know, but that was really funny because it's just so sweet. I love them. I need them to marry in real life. Are they married in real life? <laughs> Who is Bruce Willis even married to in real life? I don't even know. I don't know. He had like a wife before. He was married to Demi Moore, but... um, Oh, yeah. They were married right before Ashton Kutcher. Right. They were married for a long time. That fucking went off. That was not a good situation. What was not a good situation? Well, Ashton Kutcher is now married to Mila Kunis. Well, yeah. He was with her before he got with Demi Moore. And then they got... And then they broke up and he got with Mila Kunis, Demi Moore, and then back to Mila Kunis. He's only six feet tall. Uh, spouse Demi Moore is 1987 to 2000 damn, damn they were married for a while and then now he's currently married to Emma Hemming Willis who I have no idea who she is oh she's very pretty let me see I want to freaking see eh. look her up if you haven't looked her up she's very pretty yeah. you don't like her yeah. oh you're such a dick Oh. She's younger, way younger. But overall, um anyway, so he escapes his house and he goes and meets who, babe? Joe. Morgan Freeman. And Morgan Freeman is a dirty old man. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Can you explain what had happened? So he, for those who saw it, uh, y'all get a kick out of this, but y'all who didn't, he was sitting in his little nursery home and he was asking a nurse to move the TV because the picture wasn't great. So he was like, oh yeah, yeah, if you can just move it a little bit to the right. And she was like, oh, like, so he, she goes over to TV and she bends over to where she's like at a 90 degree angle and her ass is pointing right at him. And he was like, no, 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 a little bit more to the right. And she's like, oh, right here? And he's like, perfect. Because her ass is like right in front of his face in the TV. And she catches on and turns around and like gives him this little smile. She and she's fun. like, damn, she probably fucked him later. She probably did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so he meets him and they're talking about shit. It, there's a lot of details in this, but it's. Essentially about Guatemala, something that went down in Guatemala. That's the premise. Apparently, they thought the vice president went on a murdering spree in Guatemala and then they covered it up and they sent Bruce Willis and his crew in there to kind of, you know, clean it up and make it seem like, you know, it wasn't done or whatever the case was. Uh, But it turns out it was who will find out a different person. So... The like after he goes visits uh, Joe at the nursing home, he leaves and he's like trying to like escape. And the coolest part of this fucking movie, 
was when Bruce Willis spin, spun the car out and he opened he the car. He steps out. He steps out. He that fucking was. steps out and he starts shooting and he walks and he just walks like that as normal. That was pretty dope. I was like, yo, of I, I'm not an action movie person, but that action movie that moment. That was pretty clean. Uh, that was badass. Kudos. Kudos. Granick, is it true? Can it actually happen? Probably. I don't know, but depends on how fast the car is turning. It seemed like it was probably going, but they slow mode it. But I'm pretty sure that would fucking take somebody out. Like, <laughs> at least clip their legs and he would yeah. hit his head and shit. But um, so do you. OK, so that pretty much sums up the, the guy who was chasing him. Oh, puppies. Take a Grind, shot. Take a shot. That's what? Four now? Five now? Like seven. Y'all gonna be <laughs> fucking hammered. Uh, so uh, after like the chase scene, fight scene, um, the William Cooper, I believe his name is, gets captured. He gets, a, not arrested because he's CIA, but he gets captured. And so Frank gets away. And um, do you remember what red stands for? Retired. Extremely dangerous. Stop yawning, man. Sorry. I have to, I drank earlier. Now I'm not. So anyway, sorry. Let me say it again. Retired and extremely dangerous. That's kind of cool. I want to have that label on my gravestone, please and thank you. But I wonder how they just label someone that, like, because they're like, oh yeah, you know, why would they wait until I'm retired to do it? Oh, I guess they're still is. extremely dangerous, but now they're retired yeah, and nah. extremely dangerous. So it's like. I would think you would take them out earlier before they retired. That's that was my question, like timeline wise. Like that's where it kind of disjointed because it's been years. Yeah, it's since, been years since the incident, and so I was like, "Why are they doing choosing now to do it?" But I was like, "What are you doing?" Just covering her eyes. <laughs> are you playing peekaboo with her? I am. She does not move. <laughs> Ty is covering his hands over Lala's face. And then she's just sitting there and she's not moving. <laughs> she she's not. Me, she does not give two shit. She does not give two shit. So we get to meet one of my favorite characters. John Malkovich? Marvin. John Malkovich. Yeah, John Malkovich. Yeah. So he's... The the funny thing is when they go meet him, he brings Sarah and he's like, don't talk about cell phones, don't talk about satellites, don't make sudden moves. Like he's mm. listening to all the shit. And she's like, what the fuck? Like, OK, whatever. And so this guy launches himself at them and he's like about to shoot him. And he's like, you tried to kill me before. And he's like, that was in the past. I'm not doing it now. And he's mm-hmm. like, OK. And so they're best buds. And we find out that this guy was claiming to be in a mind control group and it turns out that he was like getting microdose with lsd lsd for 12 years 10 or 12 years years something like that and so (laughs) and it was like turned out to be right so pretty much everything that fucking marvin said throughout the movie was was true they didn't believe him because he's a crackpot but but it was true it was all true so we're like he was talking about a helicopter the helicopter was flying around his house and he's like oh we need to get in and she's like oh your house is over there and he's like that's a that's not a real house that's a decoy that's a decoy and so they go down into this trunk of a car and there's like stairs and shit that goes down to like this like bunker down. and that's his house which is i would definitely do that i would definitely do that and then oh my god stop licking stop it go away um, but they grab a pig and they talk about it and they like kind of start piecing together what was happening where these people that are being like showing up dead are people from this like s- scenario back in like Guatemala. Mm-hmm. And so, um, they are like trying to figure it out. And so Barbara's like, okay, let's go. And the helicopter's f- like following them. And then he, they're walking around and he like, Assaults this lady. This redhead lady because she was following them. And he's like, who do you work for? With this fucking like big ass revolver to her neck. Not like when you see a revolver, you're like, okay, cool. No, this was huge. No, this was a fucking, I don't know what type of revolver it was, but it's, it's definitely a, it's kind of like the one in, um, in, uh, the walking dead, but a little bit, a, bigger. A little bit, a little bit bigger. It was more bulky. But, so, yeah, he's threatening this woman, and the guy was like, there's no camera in her. Bruce was like, there's no camera in her purse. Just let her go. So the lady takes off, 
And then they end up uh, oh, going, airfield. they find the, the last guy on the list that hadn't been taken out yet. He's at like some airport airfield thing. They're talking to him and he sees the same helicopter that he saw before. And he's like, yeah, November 8, 7, 9 or blah, blah, blah. And Charlie. he wrote it down. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and the idiot dude is like, oh, it's just some news reporter. And he goes and stands by the window. He gets by the window and gets fucking, fucking sniped. Sh- <laughs> and sorry, they started shooting everybody. They jumped down. Sure enough, I was like, well, maybe it's someone else across like a building. Nope, it's that fucking helicopter that John Malkovich said was a culprit. And so it's true. Everything you said was true. Do you remember what you said during that moment? What? When the helicopter was shooting, like just point blank. Shit. Oh, I was like, they can't be doing that shit like in real life. In public. In public, just fucking blasting up like an air, air, air field like that. Like they would... Everybody would be on their ass. So, yeah, they're shooting it up. They get away. And here comes the same lady that was in a business suit before with fucking two rocket launchers on her back. No, no, no. First, she shoots at them normally. Then she comes back with two rocket launchers. So what I was going to say in a scene is a buddy at work told me that this scene is technically not true. Because when you fire a rocket launcher, it has a like a safety system in it or something like that to where if it explodes earlier. So say if I'm standing right here, I shoot the rocket launcher at that wall. It has like a delay to where it actually activates. So I think it has to be in the air. I don't know how true it is. You know, sometimes some, some things he says is kind of off the wall, but I'm just saying what he said. And someone can tell me if that's true or not. Um, If you, if you shoot it within a foot or two of you, it's going to hit and it's it's a dud. But if it travels for like, three, four, five seconds or something like that, a certain delayed time, then that's when these pins or things in there open up and that's when it's armed. So if it hits something now, it'll blow up. But it has like a, there's no backwards projection. It only goes forward. So that was what I was getting to. When he shot it, for one- That was like three seconds later. It wouldn't go backwards though. It would only, the explosion would only go forward. Even with his bullet ricocheting through Yeah, it would only go forward. It wouldn't go backwards. It protects the shooter, supposedly. I like how this little, like, petite girl. Is- she's not really that petite. I mean, she's like a good 190 or something. I mean, she's like, short. She was, she she's was short. A, not a chunky girl, but she, was she wasn't hefty. She's she was thick. a little bit more than thick. Like, she had some weight on her. So I'm pretty sure firing those rocket launches was nothing. <laughs> she had the walk. Like, she's like, eh. Old man, and he's like, I'm not old. No, grandpa. I think she called him. I think they were calling him grandpa, and they didn't like that because they were fucking way better. Than... Bruce Willis beat the crap out of Billy Butcher. Yeah, he did. <clears throat> and he just broke it or dislocated his shoulder. Oh, fucking gave him some red like eye trauma somehow. Like, I wonder how they did that. Like, do you have to put red food coloring in their eye or is it maybe maybe just computer eyes words a contact <laughs> oh yeah i didn't think about that because <laughs> i know for johnny depp when he played um jack sparrow he had a full contact that made his eyes look yellow see like i would love to get my eyes tattooed black and be fucking creep like black and then red but I am too fucking picky about my eyes. I don't want shit going in my eyes. You barely let me touch your I eyes. can't even put like eye drops in my eyes. So yeah, I would not be able to do fucking that. But yeah, so apparently that is not like a true scene. But so that was what I was saying about I don't know how the bullets thing. I don't know if that's a real thing. I would like to test it or maybe we can like send it to like Mythbusters or something. To test out a rocket launcher versus a revolver. No, well, they can test it out. Okay. I mean they would have to probably be behind like a blast shield and like have it or maybe just set it up to where it fires exactly on point with each other. But uh, no, I was talking about the bullets in the grease or in the oil. If that's like a true thing. So yeah, after that, then they get away scot-free. What's the next part? They, Oh no, isn't uh. I think, no, this is when they still haven't found out. We skipped the freaking major part. No, uh, this is the major part leading up no, to that. No, no, Because they haven't no, met Veronica no. yet or Ivan. No, no, no. That's not what I was getting to. Joe, when they were talking about, when they had a conversation at the, uh, nursing, at the home. nursing home, Bruce Willis leaves. Oh, he pretty He's he sitting in the, yeah, he almost, like the assassin comes into his room. He's like, oh, this is how it is. 
and then they that's it they end and then he apparently gets a call that he's dead like how the fuck like how did that happen and no so, no no he frank called joe and somebody picked up his phone and he was like uh okay no me, that's not how that went down. that is actually how it went down you nope. were not paying attention that is not how it went down at i all. will bet you a hundred dollars someone picked up joe's phone no he, he the, nurse the nurse at the nursing home. home no he called joe and they had his cell phone because he's dead and they were carting him out and they were like, oh, okay, let's talk to the doctor. But he no. wasn't dead. So that's why I understand yeah. that whole scene. He faked it. Obviously, he faked it. Um, Obviously. So he got the nurses in on it. He, not nurses. They thought he was really dead. He, there was a body. They don't really. Oh, he planned, he planted the other guy to be him, I guess. Probably. Or something. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't catch on to that. Well, all right. So, yeah. So that was a major point. So then this is when they go back to somewhere ivan they first visit ivan yeah oh Who's yeah the then he visits uh, the ivan the guy. russian he tries to get him on board and then um they were not really best friends but yeah they try to kill each other at some point yeah but they were talking about people and he's like oh he's in witness protection he has 7 11 well he was saying he killed some guy and apparently that person that bruce supposedly killed was his nephew cousin or, or cousin but he's like no i didn't kill him he actually like owns seven 7-Eleven chains, and he's like 500 pounds, and Ivan started laughing. And then Veronica, whoever that was. Uh, Veronica's the Veronica girl. That's her. Oh. Her name's Veronica. Oh, he because Ivan's like, I got Veronica or something like that. And they cheers to it. I just didn't understand what he meant by that. He was in love with But her. then um, they end up, I caught on later on when she's like, oh, the man that I love, I shot him three times. And, in the chest. In the chest. But she shot him, like, right here. He's not going to die from that. That's, like, damn near his shoulder. It but was she like still one, shot two, him three. because she had to prove her loyalty to the CIA. She did. But when she said chess, I thought it was, like, chess is, like, here to me. That's a chess. Up here, that's a shoulder. Yeah, but, like, she wanted to make sure he survived, so that yeah, was so Yeah, he's like, sweet. when I woke up, I knew this woman loved me. <laughs> that is so sweet. He's, like, so in love with her. It was so cute. And he saved, and he saved her. Aww. He did. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Your um, fake cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was the good part. Um, so then they go to this douchebags. Okay, so they recruit people. We have the chick now, the older lady who is good at killing people. She is in wet works. Mm-hmm. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. Because every time anybody says what works, I just think of the the people you hire on Craigslist to pee on you. The fuck? That's technically called what works. I didn't know that was a thing. It is. People do that. That's gross. Um, <laughs> a little bit gross. It is really gross. Anyway, some people like that. Don't yuck other people's yum. Um, so they, she's really good. And then we have uh, Marvin. We have Joe. We have, not Joe. We have... Yeah, we have Joe now. Joe came back. He Joe wasn't actually back, dead. Yeah. And so they go to this douchebag's house, who I forgot what his name is. Strand. Strand. The bald guy? Yeah. The one that was in Guatemala? Mm-hmm. Or Guatemala, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they go to his house, and because uh, like, there was only one more person that hadn't been killed yet since the guy in the Air Force or Airfield was killed. And uh, they're talking to him and, and what is it, interrogating him. And he basically pitched him a lie saying that the VP went off his rails and killed a bunch of people, covered it up, and now he's trying to run for president. The VP is. Vice President. Um, so, yeah, he they end up knocking him out. They leave. And ma'am, turn your phone off, ma'am. It's 9 o'clock, so we need to wrap it up. It is 9 o'clock. We're damn near at the end anyway. So then, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they knock him out. Then they, oh, yeah, they that's when they talk about they're going to kill the vice president because Billy Butcher captures uh, Sarah. Mm-hmm. And Bruce Willis gives him a nice little call. And he says, oh, he, and he's, it's, that was actually kind of slick because he's talking to him. And obviously, Bruce Willis knows that they're triangulating his call. Obviously. Obviously. He was in the CIA. So, duh. Obviously. Um, tri- 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 triangulating. Triangulating his call. 
And to the surprise, Billy Butcher, I keep calling him Billy Butcher because that's what I know him as from the boys. But it's William Cooper. It's William Cooper in the movies, people, just for the correction there. But Billy Butcher, <laughs> uh, turns out that he is at his house. And Bruce Willis is telling him that a man would do anything for the woman that he loves or his family. So Bruce gives him an ultimatum saying that I need you to protect Sarah or I'm going to like brutally murder your whole fucking family. And he has two kids and a wife. Yeah, two kids and a wife. So um, so then uh, what's his name? Billy Butch is on board. He tries to stop him still, but in like a nicer way, I guess. And... Oh, you know what? No, doesn't Joe actually get taken out that time? They're at the snow. So thing, they're at the they're at, and uh, they're saying one person has to actually sacrifice themselves, and he actually does die in that moment. And so they're running away, and that's when uh, Sarah gets captured. Yeah, that's when Sarah gets captured. And so, sorry, we skipped the point. If you watch it, you know what we're talking about. There's yeah. a lot of like little like ins and outs of this movie, and it's really hard to follow unless we like mark it like yeah, piece by I'm, piece. Um, so yeah, that's when Sarah gets captured. Joe dies legit this time. Morgan Freeman. Poor Morgan so then, Freeman. um, that's when Ivan has a talk with Bruce Willis saying, Hey, you know, they got your girl. So you need to do whatever you need to do to get her back. And that's when Bruce is at, uh, Billy Butcher or William Cooper's house. And then, um, so then he's telling him he's going to kill the vice president. And it's just like whole action pack going after the vice president at his little, like gala thing uh, gala thing he's like talking and um so they like do other tricks to get them to go the direction that they want they start shooting a really freaking 50 cal machine gun at the vehicle crazy. which all those people in that fucking thing would have been dead 100 percent um because it was a huge gun it was not bulletproof like normally vice president's cars are bulletproof but this one did not seem bulletproof um, well, I mean, so, yeah. it did kind of because no. it got shot at a few times before it, it, it started. Would, you see it go through the window like it was making holes in the window so okay. it would have shredded them to pieces but anyway so then um poor freaking uh the wet works girl veronica gets shot and i, I thought like, it was i was sad i was like she better not fucking like ivan has finally got her back in a way like this th no no, I was not happy with that. And so and she was about to sacrifice herself. And so, so she was like cute. leaning against the cage and she's like, I can't get out. And he's like, oh, do you need help? Do you need saving my love? And he comes up with a ah, knife the and, bunny. Boop, ah. and he picks her up and they and she's like, I do love you. Oh, it was I a good scene. You. It was a good scene. I like uh, that. Oh, folk. It's romantic. Love. It is romantic. So then they walk off into the sunset, even though it's a hallway down a building that they're being shot at. It's a dark building. It's fine. It's cool. <laughs> so, yeah. But they walk down a, into the sunset. And then. So then this is when they kind of veer the president off to like the vice president off and they capture him. Oh, because and they, so they get into Bruce this Wilson garage area oh. where all like the bad guy who I don't remember his name. Strand Strand. I don't remember. The bad guy. Bald white guy. Bald, bald white guy, guy is there. And he's that like, can be Bruce Willis too. <laughs> uh, I mean, but it's not short Bruce bald guy. <laughs> short bald guy who has like really white hair. He Bruce Willis had no hair, um, and so he's actually the really bad guy. And he has Sarah, and he's like, oh, and so yeah, he turns out he's the one who put the hit out on, um, on everybody. Red, the retired, extremely dangerous. That means Joe died, freaking. Because of this dickhead, this dickhole. But um, uh, what was it? And then uh, so they he tells William Cooper, or Billy Butcher, to handcuff him, and they're gonna kill him, Sarah, and everybody else there. Supposedly, pretty and much then, any any of the witnesses. Yeah, they're just gonna kill everybody there and then dip out. But freaking Cooper gives him a nice little key in his little uh, palm in his palm. <laughs> and Bruce Willis starts speed walking towards this dude, which obviously in real yeah. life he would have been shot in the head. But he walks up to him, and then that's when his people come out. And then tag, Marvin, tag, tag. Veronica, Ivan just shoot everybody around them. And freaking Cooper shoots his the lady that was like giving him orders. His, whoever his superior. Yeah, his superior. He shoots her. And then Bruce Willis fucking, I guess, breaks that dude's throat. Like, he 
hit him in and broke like this. That's part. how you do it. You shove your hand in their throat as hard as you can. Uh, he, That's th- gonna kill someone really fast. Oh, really? It does kill him. Yeah, because you can't breathe. Uh, he he fucking did it. He was bah. Um. So yeah, and then um. They live happy ever after. Yeah, they have live happy ever after, and everybody survives. And there's a red too. So I don't know if it's gonna be on our movie. It might. I should just make that my next movie. <laughs> Red 2. But he has to be Halloween themed, so. Oh, yeah. We're doing Halloween themed this month. Because it's October. Okay, so what? So what is your score? I'm going to give it a solid No, no, no. Eight. What is your score? Eight. 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 <laughs> uh, fuck. Uh, I would say eight, too. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, good. It was a good movie, but there's some plot holes that I just... Like what plot holes? I just there's like why did they wait so long to kill them? Like, the, you know, in movies is always talking. I know, I know. Just like in the last like, one we saw when it was uh uh what would you rather? He, would you rather? And the freaking guy shows up. He's like, hey, I'm gonna save you, blah blah blah, and he gets blasted in the head. It's like in real life, you're not gonna get there and be like. Point a gun out and monologuing like, hey, I'm here to save you. It's like you're going to fucking see them, run up to them. You're going to get the fuck out of there because they were already in the area where they came in at, where he came in at. Okay, okay. We're not going to go back into that movie. We can go back in that movie all we freaking want. That's what the podcast is about. Damn it. I'm Rick James. Really? Yeah. And you're Charlie Murphy. Who's that? (laughs) <laughs> oh my god <laughs> alright so we have eights for this movie please watch it it was actually really good it has yeah. romance it has action it has comedy it has everything that you want and gore so definitely it is a really good movie do it do I it. mean I would give it a 10 I mean it should be a 10 it's a 10 man my movies are always 10s if I like them they're 10s okay cool <laughs> Um. so now we're going to move on to our topic do you remember what our topic is today fuck no uh, urban legends. Oh, dun, dun, dun. I thought we did this already. No, Bigfoot. That's no, an urban that's legend. cryptid. Oh, that was the urban same legends thing. are like stories that may or may not be true. Oh, okay. Cryptids are animals or creatures that may or may not be true. Oh, okay. All right. So urban legend, got it. So we're going to start off, and we have ten urban legends we're going to go through, and Ty is just going to say if he believes them or not. You're going to read them all or what? I can. All right, whatever. All right, so the first one, Bloody Mary. Have you ever done Bloody Mary before? Uh, No, because I'm not stupid. Why do you believe it? I believe in all that stuff. If you believe in ghosts, you believe in Bloody Mary and Freddy, I mean, not Freddy Cougar, but uh, Candyman and all that. Candyman? Don't don't say Candyman five times in front of the mirror. It's three times, I thought. Five. Oh. You need to pay attention more. Your face. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so perhaps the most famous modern myth, this tale suggests that if you look in a mirror and say Bloody Mary a specific number of times, so three, um, <laughs> something will happen. It's the it's the what the legend disagrees on. In the early, so everybody does, disagrees the number. So sometimes you can say once, whatever. Um, in the earliest versions, an unmarried woman would see the face of her future husband in the glass or a skull if she were destined to die before being wed. Wow. This evolved into something more gory. Groups invoking a bleeding spirit or a witch called Mary. Some links have also been made to Queen Mary the I as she suffered multiple miscarriages during her reign. That would be shitty if that's what they thought that came up. Like Queen Mary the First, and she was Bloody Mary because she had a lot of miscarriages. Oh, really? That's what I just said. You were not paying attention. I was paying attention. Uh, I thought that was. Did it do? I mean, that makes sense. That's why she's Bloody Mary. So. Yeah, but that's like a terrible urban legend. I would rather just have it be a witch or something rather than a lady who has to relive her life of miscarriages. So maybe it's more so her, maybe. like being. All right, so that's Bloody Mary. Everybody knows Bloody Mary. We're going to move on to the stuff I don't know. So we have a few here. Um, it, this one, number two, is called the spider bite. Have you ever heard of that? Okay, I'm going to read it because I've never heard of this. Possibly one of the more believable urban myths. This one tells the tale of a young person, often a traveler to a far-flung location, who is bitten by a spider and or ant. On returning home, the victim experiences a hatching 
whereby a parasitic baby spiders and or ants burst from under the skin. FYI. Oh, fuck that. This isn't physically possible, but it hasn't stopped paras- parasitology being a defined feature of the body horror genre. So like alien, dream catcher, So why can't host. spiders burst from the underneath the skin? I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a parasitologist. Uh, uh, what was that? A parasitologist. <laughs> a parasitologist. That's what it says. Parasitologist. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I don't know. They said if it's not, they says, FYI, this isn't physically possible. So I'm just going to believe it. No, it's not physically possible. Like if spiders are underneath your skin, like the eggs. So this is an urban legend. Do you um, believe it? <laughs> fuck if I know. Oh, I know. that like makes me bother. Yeah, I don't. I hate it. Oh God. Okay. That would be super. Good. And I hate on. spiders. So uh, that's bo- that 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 one's bad. That okay, number three. Cry. The hook man. Do you like rem- a hookworm. <laughs> that scares me too. Okay, so oh, my body hurts. All right, another campfire. Let me remind. Okay, so the hook man. Another campfire must. This tale features an enamorous cu- young couple out for a drive when the radio informs them a hook-handed lunatic has escaped from a local institution. Either the couple go home to find a hook embedded in the back of the car, or one of them ends up suspended above the car with fingers scraping against the roof. In the original novelized version, I Know What You Did Last Summer by Lewis Duncan, uh, Lois, Lois Duncan. The killer uses a gun, but the cinematic version by Kevin Wil- Williamson features a hook-handed fisherman mm-hmm. hell-bent on revenge. Mm-hmm. The Candyman also used a hook for hand. He did. So, Hookman. How about this urban legend? Have you heard that story? Never heard it. Literally, like I like back in the day when I we had we were telling ghost stories. This was when like. Couples were like making out in a car or something, and they hear like scraping along the car. Mm. And then, maybe I have heard that then. Yeah, it's freaky. I just maybe I didn't know it was Hookman. Maybe I thought it was something else. Maybe Candyman, Whoopi Goldberg. I don't know. Yes, Whoopi Goldberg is the ultimate urban legend. She is number seven. Scratching at your car (laughs) trunk. (laughs) Bitch. (laughs) Get away from him. Actually, she's sober. Oh. All right. So, the Hookman, I believe that's a pretty good one. I like that one. Number four, freaky food. Mm. Freaky food. Recently outraged internet people were taken in by claims that popular fast food outlets, KFC, were breeding genetically mutated chickens for their burgers. Well, that's fucking already happening. So (laughs) while the shock, sorry, I got to change pages. Give me one second here. Little struggle bus. There we go. Pictures were quickly revealed to be fakes. More than more than one of my Facebook friends were taken in. Foodstuffs often fall victim to urban myths. Are McDonald's burgers really made from earthworms? Ew. Will mixing popping candy and fizzy pop make you explode? No. Don't forget the pernile dog meat takeaway rumor. What? I have no idea what that means. For I guess burgers or burgers are made out of dog meat in the United States. I guess that's what they're talking about. I mean, it isn't Food good. is at the center of our lives, so it's no surprise it's at the heart of our fiction. The Hunger Games present kids willing to kill for a lifetime of food while Soylent, Greens, Soylent Green, based on the 1960s novel Make Room, Make Room, Make Room, goes one further and suggests we'll soon be eating people, much like in Matt Wayman's The Savages. Interesting. Yes. That one, I believe. Yeah. Because <laughs> remember, like, pink, pink goo for chicken McNuggets? Yeah, for the chicken nuggets. I don't believe that at all, though. I don't. Because when I used to eat chicken McNuggets, it was flaky. Yeah, the outside. Not no, the... the inside, it was like flick pieces of chicken. They can make it freaking flaky, babe. They can do a lot of things nowadays. You chose, like, the longest one. I want to read the next one. You're reading too many. Share the wealth. Number five. No, I want to skip to number six. Maybe. I don't know. I know how to go in order, ma'am. Go. Ma'am. The licked hand. Ew. (laughs) 
That sounds gross. <laughs> in this popular tale, a scared girl or sometimes an old woman listens to an anonymous dripping coming from her within her home. She is reassured by the presence of her faithful dog who licks her hand from under the, her <gasps> under the bed. Eventually, she investigates the noise only to find her dog slaughtered and a message written in blood. Humans can lick hands, too. Well, I remember the story. Uh, this story ha- was actually taken from a much earlier uh, M.R. James story called The Diary of Mr. Por- Portier. I don't know how to say that. In which a character experienced a similar fate. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Okay, so the licked hand. This is the one where this old lady, like older lady, is sitting in, like laying in bed and she hears like dripping. And she's like, oh. Oh, it must be just the the faucet or whatever. And so she's like, eventually keeps on going. And she's like, okay, maybe this is weird. This is sounding a little strange. And But her arm is laying down and she, something licks her hand. And so she thinks it's her dog. But then eventually the dripping keeps on going. She's like, I can't sleep. I'm just going to go look at it. She goes down to the kitchen and realizes her dog is slaughtered in the kitchen. So the dog is dead in the kitchen, and in the writing and the with the blood from the dog, it says people can lick hands too. So whatever licked her hand in bed. Oh, it was a person or something. The person probably killed the dog. It was probably going to oh, kill her. Oh shit! <laughs> That's interesting. Isn't that scary? Oh, I don't like that. That it is a little me. scary. Oh, I'm not going to sleep tonight. Okay, cool. Wow, if someone murdered my dog. I would. Mm-mm. Anywho, hi, Fifi. You want to read the next one? All right, it's number six. Ruff, read number ruff, ruff, six. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Fifi, job. read number six. You're, you're doing a terrible job. <laughs> <laughs> you just want love for me. Get down. Don't step on. Okay, number six. You can read the last two. Okay. Uh, the kidney heist. Oh, this is yeah. not sound good. <laughs> In this tale, a young man is either seduced by a beautiful woman or pays for an escort. The following morning, he awakens in the bathtub full of, oh, I've heard this one, full of ice to find one of his kidneys has been removed for sale on the black market. The moral couldn't be clearer. Really, could it? <laughs> Organ harvesting is a staple of horror fiction from whoever the hell that is. Never let me go to Neil shuster men excellent unwind or unwind 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 <laughs> yeah uh, that one i've heard it's and also charlie the unicorn i i would they definitely stole my believe, freaking kidney i would believe the kidney heist 100 percent. i mean i saw a video of this guy i'm not gonna say any race or anything but this guy this family there was people sitting out on a patio i don't know where it was they were sitting out on a patio this guy comes walking across the street. All of a sudden, he gets close to like the fence of where these people are sitting at. Jumps over the fence, darts at this little girl, and tries to kidnap her in public during the day. And like everybody starts jumping on this dude. One guy, he just he grabs the child and starts trying to take off, but he did not get away. Like they end up like Shit. jumping on him and getting him, and they got the kid away. But I was just like. Are you fucking kidding me? Like broad daylight, like with forty people around. Like what the hell? So yeah, I definitely. If that shit is going on for sure in real life, people are selling kidneys. Kidney high sell a kidney. Kidney heist is for sure going. Yeah, but the difference is you're consenting to it. These people are not. It's like, like Charlie Jeffrey the Dahmer when he's like, "Hey, come over. I want to have sex with you." But I'm really gonna mor- mur- torture you, torture, torture. <laughs> torture you, murder you, and then I on the really cake. Want I'm gonna murder eat them. you. He wanted them to stay, so he drilled holes on their head and put acid in it. Oh my god! Apparently, they were talking about it at work. Like the first episode is like really bad. A lot oh of yeah, can't that was watch it. that was the worst one. Everything else is not too really? bad. Really? So like, the first episode is that bad? That bro. was, yeah. Like it kind of gets into what he does, and then he. He each episode I've been watching it. It's not bad. Everybody's like complaining about it, but it's the life of Jeffrey Dahmer. Like I don't get why people are so upset. Because it's, it's babe. Seriously, they're upset is because it literally happened. Anyway, it's not so fiction. <laughs> it's but it's like from my understanding of it, I like I researched Jeffrey Dahmer when like 
I learned about him and I was like, oh, that's very interesting. And it's actually his life. It was a break. Stop. It was a breakdown. She's just putting her hands on you. She's not doing anything right now. I don't want her to lick me. She's um, not licking you. But uh, he, that's his life. Like, it was a breakdown of his life and how it happened and how he became who he was. And so it's really fascinating because his life of neglect and misunderstanding led him to technically murder. Okay, I can't say that led him to it. He probably would have done it regardless. <sighs> maybe, maybe not. Because if he wasn't, like, because his mom literally abandoned him and he was alone for, like, Five, My dad abandoned months. me, and I'm fine. You had a mom. So his mom and dad abandoned him. Yeah. You just said mom. You didn't say mom. Well, his, they got a divorce, and so his dad had to leave. And so then his mom's like, I need to take a vacation, and she never show, came back. Yeah, but that still doesn't. Anyway. I, like, she didn't try to, like, murder him or something like that. She just neglected him. That I don't think neglecting a child is going to put them towards but you don't like know torturing him. and murdering people. It's nurture versus mur- bleh, bleh, nurture versus nature. And then if that's the case, it should be like how um, Ted Bundy was. Like he was murdering brunette uh, haired women who kind of resembled. Wasn't it like his mom or something like that or girlfriends in the past or something? That's why he was doing it. So like, he got broken up case, with, with the girl who looked exactly yeah, like all exactly. these girls. So, so it, it's that it's shit. makes more sense. But him getting neglected by his mom, but yet he is gay and he starts murdering men because he wanted people that to has, stay around. No, 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 no. The reason why he killed them was because he wanted them to stay. Because every time he would sleep with somebody or be around somebody, they would get up and leave, and that's what he didn't want. He wanted everybody okay, to that stay. That makes more sense. Then. So that he had neglect issues. He had abandonment issues. All right, we're moving on. Moving on. Location, location, location. Let me see if I can read this. Um, Do you need as, me to read it again? As someone eager to get on the property ladder, I don't know how bothered I'd be to check what my house was built on, but you might want to get a surveyor to ho- have a look. Everyone knows houses built on burial grounds are bound to be cursed, right? Although ancient Indian burial mounds are few and far between in the USA. Not true. Uh, They sure get a lot of flack. From Stephen King's The Shining, Pet Cemetery, and Pep Cemetery to Hollywood's classic Poltergeist and and even Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the message is very clear. Just don't just look at a home before you buy it. Look under it. Oh, Yeah, let's look under it, why don't we? Uh, let's pick up the house. It's poltergeist. They didn't look even say under that, it. Did they? Look at the foundation and then put the house back. Poltergeist. Down. They didn't even say poltergeist on here. That was like the main theme of that one. Anyway. Or yeah, I guess like movie? I guess definitely. I mean, I've had that happen to me. Location, location, location. So I definitely believe in that one when I was at my buddy's place and that fucking bed shook. I I wanna hear I wanna hear P's story about that too. Like, he said he had it happen, too. So, well, we didn't go down and visit him. I am not going down to South Texas. Yeah, we are. All right. So, the next one is called Chain Letters. Chain Letters. All right. So, you know this one. You get sent a communique that suggests if you don't pass it on to five or more people, then some terrible consequence will happen. This urban legend seems to have a predicted viral marketing by 20 years or so. The concept of the deadly chain letter was best explored by Christopher Pike's chain letter, but the idea uh, of cursed text is also exam- uh, explored in Scarlett Thomas's The End of Mr. Y, and also Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, that's cute. So if you don't pass this on to five people, you're going to die. Oh, so it's like all the memes that people send around. Like, it's so annoying. Oh, yeah, you'll become rich if you send this to a thousand people. But if you people. don't, you'll li- live yeah, in poverty. You'll live in poverty and blah, blah, blah. I, I haven't seen that. those I around lately. Those. I hated they those. They used to go around for years. Maybe I that. haven't seen them recently. Good. Good. Uh, the next one is more serious. The last two are very, very important. I thought we were, what? We have nine and ten. Nine and ten. Nine is the call is coming from inside the house. You know this one. The moral is clear. Women protect your children. Variations of this one see a babysitter being tormented by threatening phone calls that turn out to be coming from inside the house. The children in her care are often murdered. Jesus. Variations of the story are everywhere and notably 
uh, in Point Horrors, The Babysitter by R.L. Stein. Read that one. Loved it. Um, and Mother's Helpers by A. Bates. Kevin Williams paid homage homage in the Scream series and did I in Hollow Peak. Um, also, a, when a stranger, a stranger calls. calls. When a stranger calls. With advances in mobile phone technology, expect this to develop into Snapchat-based horror or killers using Tinder to track down their victims. I'm actually surprised there hasn't been like Tinder or because you have all these dating apps on there. I'm pretty sure there are people though. meet up and they fucking go to these strangers' houses like after going out and drinking and shit, and then you know whatever happens. Like I am really surprised that you haven't heard something about that on the news. Unless it has, I just haven't noticed it. I don't know, but I mean, I don't obviously watch the news, but I figured I would have seen or heard something about it. So that's kind of weird. Like I'm always like when I used to date and be on Tinder, I never met anybody on there because I'm not hot enough. But oh, whatever. Uh, like say if I did, I would be very skeptical going to like another chick's house. I would never go to anybody's house for like the first four dates. Like because that you just never know what could happen. Like they could be especially like granted, I didn't also didn't have money. So like what could they get from me? You know, <laughs> uh, let's say one like wanted my organs. Him. I don't know. But it's just it's just scary to think of. But anyway, all right, last one is the most popular one. I think you know this one. The call is coming. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, y'all probably most of y'all would know this one. It there is actually a movie on it. I love it. It is called The Slender Man. A truly modern. Why is modern twice? Modern. A truly modern modern, modern. myth. Slender Man started online as part of a competition to Photoshop pictures to include a natural ele- uh, supernatural element. User Victor Surge, well, that's a cool name, added a suited, faceless, unnaturally tall figure into two black and white photos, which were copied and distributed virally over the net. Jesus. Uh, since then, millions of authors, mostly online, have shared and spread the story on websites such as Creepy Pasta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> creepy Pasta. We're gonna cover that. That's gonna be the one of my Slender Man's. Too. I've never heard of Creepy Pasta. Creepy Pasta is like story. Like there's certain characters just have a story that makes it a creepy pasta. So an urban legend can be a creepy pasta. Urban legend can be a creepy pasta, but not all creepy pastas can be urban legends. Mm, got it. Um, I guess we'll have to do our creepy pasta thing one day. The Slender Man's mo is to abduct people, abduct people, often abduct. children who seem to willingly go with the figure never to be seen again, making him a terrifying vision version of the Pied Piper. Pied Piper. Pied Piper. New urban legends will almost certainly have some sort of viral online element. Jeff the Killer is a similar factually disfigured internet meme. Jeff the Killer? Never heard of that one either. I haven't heard that either. Jeff the the Killer. The Slender Man. I'm surprised like Candyman wasn't on there. I don't know. And fucking. I guess uh, he was in the top 10. And like Jason, and, Jason's a horror. Or no, not, that's uh, not an urban legend. No, uh, what's the the guy with uh, Freddy? Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger is a horror movie, not an urban legend. Okay, well, Candyman. But this is based on like real possibility, not. So Candyman's not one. I don't think so. No. I mean, I, I like the new version with Jordan Peele as director. That was good. Yeah, that was good. I like that. Um. um but. Well, Slender Man, I believe. Oh, let me see the list again. Give me the list, please, Mom. Let me organize it. Thank you, because you know I can't count from one to ten. Cannot. Um. So, Blood and Mary, I believe in. Good. The Spider Bite, I don't know, because I never heard it. The Hook Man, never heard it. Freaky Food, one thousand percent, I believe so in that. Probably the reason why I went vegan in the first damn place. Uh, the Licked Hand, I uh, haven't heard that one. The Kidney Heist, 100,000%, I believe, in that one. Yeah, the, the, oh, no, wait. 
I forgot there was like an eight. I thought seven was ten for some reason. I'm fucking an idiot. <laughs> location, location, location. One hundred percent believe in that one. Chain letters. What was that one again? Where you get chain letters if you don't pass it on, you'll die. Oh. I mean, I'm superstitious, so I used to do them all the time. When I like, if I started yeah, reading, I, I was like, "Fuck, I gotta do it now." But I try to skip them. So yeah, I believe in that one. Um, the call for is coming from inside the house. I yes. mean, I know that is more of a movie, not really an urban legend type No, thing. but it came from an urban legend. That's oh, why did? the movies okay. are urban. Well, I didn't know that. Um, so yes or no? I don't, I don't know on that one. That one's like a... It can't... That one's like a 50-50. Okay. And Slender Man, 100%, I believe in that one. So six out of ten. That was better than the cryptids. Mm-hmm. All right, so me... Bloody Mary, yes. Spider Bite, no, because they said, yeah, f- FYI, that can't physically be possible. Hookman was a story. Did it actually happen? Yes, because Tex Arcana, there was stories about that, and it's kind of mixed with the Zodiac Killer as well as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Freaky Food, yes. Licked Hand, it is a story. I really like the story, but do I believe it? Mm. No. Uh, Kidney Heist, yes. Location, 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 yes. Chain Letters, yes. Well, I don't believe that anything actually bad will yeah, happen, but so far when I d- the call is coming from inside your house, yes, and bloody Ma- oh, slender man, yes. I, that's like nine out of ten, no, t- eight out of ten. Yeah, I got right? a lot. Yeah, you got a lot. I, I just had believe seven. in no, shit. I, I just believe in shit because if it, there's a reason why it exists, ah, it's just like so. It's like the same thing. Like you know, at work, if you work at like a construction or really just any job in general. And they have warning signs or caution signs. There's a or reason for it. Don't do that signs. Or like especially like at my job, like I have to read um I have to read uh fuck, what is it a called? Sign. Maintenance manuals. And when they have warnings or cautions in there, they have them in there because someone did that before. So they're telling you, hey, this has happened in the past, so don't do it, type thing. So that's kind of like what these are. It's like they're out there because if it's true, then that means it's happened to someone and it's like out in the open now. So, I mean, yeah, it's a true thing. But, yeah, I, I believe in six out of ten. You got eight out of ten, ma'am. Yeah. Anyway. So. Next episode. We need to not forget to do that. Yeah, yeah, we did last time. <laughs> uh, good good topic. I liked that topic. That oh, so. Because it was mine. So, my movie. My topic. My movie is, due to Halloween, we are trying to keep it creepy. Um, we're going to watch Hocus Pocus. Oh, my God. The first one, because the new second one's out. But I, he's never seen it, and he's always complaining about I it. I don't want to see it. But I think you'll like it. I highly doubt it. Okay, then you can hate it. But oh, I, I, my. I'm going to give that shit a negative million. You're going to like it, though. Hocus it's fucking it's hocus. only like an hour and 20 minutes you're fine so you can find that on prime i believe disney plus obviously um red box for sure don't look at me i don't know <laughs> she's like looking at me like i, was trying I to remember and you're just in my, <laughs> my memory line like i'm supposed to jog her memory yeah babe so it's on blah 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 because blah, 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 you don't blah, do blah. shit you don't do I don't. any research i don't do it. i work away from home and I can't help you with research. You can when you're playing video games. I don't play video games. All the time. So topic of discussion for next podcast is... What is your accent? Your face. Oh, okay. If you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? I would most definitely Shush. like some people to like email... Or something to us, letting us know what their 30 second conversation or what they would say or do is. So I would love email to see in this. at in for the night podcast, oh, in for the night 69 at gmail.com or go to our website in for the night podcast.com and you can contact us there. That will also go to our email. You can also access our merch website as well as Patreon. So if you like us, definitely shoot us some stuff. Um, other than that, I think that's it for us. I think that might be it, folks. So, well, uh, hope y'all enjoyed. Hope he gave you a reason to stay in for the evening. And, uh, peace out. Till next time. One peace more time. out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>